title of the message today, The Last Day. I want to say something. I like completing projects, don't you? Man, that's one of the, you can off, often, you come, you have this whole project and it may take you a period of time, but I go back on my phone because I keep all the things that I need to do listed in my phone in the process of the Samsung notes. I don't know how you keep up with it, but I go back in the area and I can say, delete, it's done. And it's just so great that things finally get finished. I like that. Well, we're here on the brink of a day that we somehow must understand this is the last day of 2023. Okay, you learned that from Mr. Justin just then. This is the last day of 2023. And it is a very important day. It is the last day of the year. It is also a day, a pivot point, which we usher in the new day. Now, I, I want to just say something to you. Uh, did you know that people have different opinions on what is the most important part of a book? You, some of us uh, here today like reading books. You know, you like the, the adventure books, you like the uh, books of knowledge, you like uh, all the suspense and all the things that happen. But there are so many different aspects in the area of reading a book, and some people somehow uh, just do it kind of weird. Maybe you're an individual who reads a book kind of weird, but that's okay because it's for you to read. And by that, what I mean is some people, they judge a book by its cover. You know what I'm talking about? If the cover looks good, then therefore I will, you know, it just get, it grabbed my attention. I was walking by the bookshelf and it grabbed my attention and I just knew I had to get that book in order to read that book. And some people judge it by the cover and they say, well, that book's not for, that just is not appealing to me. And so they ignore it altogether. And some people, they are drawn to the book just by its title. Did you know that? Just a title alone will entice individuals to buy the book. How to make a billion dollars without a dime. Boy, that's great. Don't it sound good? Well, you know, but, but what I'm saying is they give a, a sense of a title that just it, it draws the people in. And then we go into the process of other individuals. Others think that the beginning of the book is the most important aspect. The beginning of the book. Because if the first couple pages of the book doesn't entice me or interest me, therefore I'm not going to spend my time reading the entirety of the book. But there are others who say the best part of the book is not the beginning, but the end. See, you might be one of those individuals who goes and gets a book and you can't wait to find out who the murderer is. You know what I mean? You want to find out who's guilty. And then you say, well, I want to find out how that comes about. And so you look at the very end of the book, you read the end of the book, and you say, wow, I want to know a little bit more. And then you go back to the beginning. And when we begin to do this, we realize that individuals who read books read in different aspects. And if we stop to view life, now I want to bring it into the aspect of life because I think that's important. If we stop to view life as a book, if your life is a book, what is the most important part of your life? The entirety of your life. People, you've got to understand that. It, it is your whole life. It isn't just one bit and one piece that you pull out from here and there. It is the whole concept of your life. Because you have to be an individual who realize that you have come from one place and you are now approaching another place. It is similar to the building blocks. And I, I love building blocks. 
Matter of fact, sometimes when we uh, go out for breakfast and, and some of our grandchildren with, are with us, uh, I, you know, I and they, we love to do what some of you might do is stack the little milk things. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever stacked those creamers, those little milk things? You ever put them up and see how high you can stack it? Have you ever seen if you could stack it up and snatch one out without knocking the rest of them down? Well, you're missing out a lot of fun. Because it takes every one of those building upon another to create the entirety of it all. The aspect of your life is not just the beginning. It's not just the end, but it is the process of how we have gotten from one point to another. That is what authors often try to do. They try to bring you from one point and, and give us the knowledge that we need to enlighten our minds and to help us in that area. So each and every day of your life is important. And I want to ask a question. Has God been a part of your life? Now, that's the entirety of your life. Has God been a part of your life? Look at your life in general and begin to say, well, when did God begin to be a part of my life? That's the beginning, okay? When he began to be a part of your life, if you really want to go back to it, it isn't the day of your salvation. It's the day of your creation. You would not be here had not God allowed it. You need to know that. And so prior to you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the day that you was born, that is a process of which God has allowed for you to be here. And that's why it's important for us to begin to realize the entirety of a person's life is very important in regards to them. I want to look at two passages of Scripture. Number one is found in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9 in verse 62, the Bible says this. It is very simple for us to follow. And Jesus said unto him, Jesus is speaking. He says, no man, no one, no individual, having put his hand to the plow and looking back. So here we are on the brink of the last day of the year. And we look at this passage and we begin to wonder the, 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 the concept of what is being meant here. He says, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So we begin to look at that passage. So is the past important? Now I have already made the premise and the word of God makes the premise that our past is important. You need to begin to understand all of your past all of your past has brought you to where you are today. All the mistakes, all the good things have brought you to be the person you are today. If you're a child of God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And you begin to see that. But also there's a passage of scripture that is found in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. So here we begin to see uh, in Romans, the Bible says, for whatsoever things were written, now wait a minute, now begin to understand the concept of what we are talking about. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Anybody know what aforetime is? In the past. What was written before? What is found documented before? What has happened, and I will paraphrase and put it this, what has happened in your life before today happens for a purpose. Now, here we begin to see. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Now, I'm here to tell you and to acknowledge I have learned from my past. Have you? Have you really learned from your past or are you an individual who somehow is a hard-headed individual that just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating the same old, and I will use a very psychological word, dumb mistakes. Do you make the same mistake over and over and over again? 
And some people do that. But the Bible says these things were written aforetime and were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Do you know what my hope is as I stand upon the last day of this year? My hope is next year we will have more people led to Jesus Christ than we've ever had in the world. Now, I'm not focusing upon our church. I'm focusing upon his church. There is a multitude of individuals who are not going to church and they don't have the concept of what Jesus Christ is all about. And they, they are uh, being led astray by some of the, the medias that are out here. And what a mistake. So, our past. Let me give you some unusual thoughts. And I have a bunch more of these, but I'm not going to share them all at this time. But these are just some things to get your mind thinking uh, to where you can focus upon as we transition from one year to the other. The first one is, you never get where you're going until you leave where you are. And, and just ponder that, soak that in. And what I may do is have Miss Sandy throw this in the bulletin next week. So if you're trying to write it all, uh, it may be there. Because I do, like I said, I've got several others. I had to just pick a few of them to where we can uh, move through the message today. But you never get where you are going until you leave where you are. In order for you to move ahead, you have to move your body. You've got uh, to move. Secondly, fear of tomorrow doesn't stop tomorrow from happening. These are all, I mean, you, you have to stop and take them in for a moment, and then you begin to say, hmm, that, that's true. That makes sense. Fear of tomorrow doesn't stop tomorrow from happening. A lot of people are fearful of tomorrow. What is going to happen tomorrow? Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? And it's not, I don't care how much you focus upon fear for tomorrow, it doesn't stop tomorrow from happening. Number three is this, finishing the year, which is where we are right now, finishing the year doesn't mean you finished with the years. Amen? I finished 2023. I made it. Hallelujah. I made it. But it doesn't mean that this is my last year. Nor does it mean it's your last year. And so we began to realize because of the concept of the truth in God's word as we will begin to see revealed. Number four. Improve on the days you have, not the ones you don't have. What are the days we don't have? We don't have the past to undo, do we? We don't have the future yet. But the days that we can approve upon is this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Let's focus upon today. If you want a brighter tomorrow, it doesn't begin tomorrow, it begins today. Improve on today. Make today the best day of your life, and it will begin to change your life forever. So those are just a couple of the thoughts. Like I said, I have uh, several others, and we'll see about getting them printed to where you will be able to have them. So how do we view, in, in light of the scriptures, and in, in light of what we said, in light of what we looked at, how do, how do we view our past? How to view your past is a very simple thing. The first thing that I want you to realize is, I believe that things happen in our life that we should learn from. I believe that we should learn from our past. For example, if you walk in and the stove is on and you touch your finger to the stove and you begin to realize, that's hot. Have you ever, anybody here ever been burnt on a stove, burnt by the oven, burnt by some aspect of anything, whatever it might be? Most every individual has been burnt in, in that process. 
How many of you want to keep continuing that same mistake over and over again? Oh, I just love burning my fingers, so I'm going to go stick my finger. Let's crank the heat up a little bit. You know, that type of aspect. We began to realize the reality is we need to learn from our past. And not only do we need to learn from our past, is secondly, we as individuals, we don't need to repeat the same mistakes. These kind of go hand in hand. You learn from your past. You don't do it again. One of the best teachings aspects is to allow a child to kind of make a mistake where you're there helping to protect them from serious harm. But you let them learn from their mistakes. They do wrong. They learn from it. When you keep them from ever making a mistake, which is impossible, by the way, you're robbing them. So learn from your past. Look back over your life and begin to evaluate and see this process. Is there things that have happened in your life that you somehow didn't like? Don't repeat those same mistakes. Don't make them over again. And Jesus wants us to learn from our past. It's not unlike Jesus to come into the process of saying, hey, this is something I want you to understand. You have a past. Your past has not always been a good past. Amen, right? People are prone to be evil. Sin is a process of life, and as we realize that it being a process of life, we realize that something happens, and Jesus wants us to learn from our past. How do I know that? There are two passages of Scripture that was uh, listed on, on, on our beginning uh, verses and all, over in John chapter 5, verse 14. This is what Jesus says to an individual he has brought healing to. He has healed this individual and Jesus and the gentleman are separated. And what we find in verse 14, afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Fantastic. You got a new beginning. But what Jesus does next is he says, you have a past that you should not repeat. How do I know that? Listen to what it says. He says, thou art made whole, sin no more. And then he gives kind of a warning here, lest a worse thing come upon thee. Now, worse than physical ailments is spiritual death. Do you understand that? A lot of people are spiritually dead. And, and you know, uh, they're going through life spiritually dead. And they're in a bad situation. So what we've got to do is get the concept going around that something needs to happen. And what Jesus says is you need to learn from your past. My past, I have a past that I, I want to leave in the past. But I want to learn from my past. And I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I am going to commit my life to Jesus Christ. And I am not going to serve the flesh of nature any longer. You get the picture? Don't repeat your mistakes. That is what Jesus is saying. He said to this individual there in John chapter 5 and verse 14. He also in John chapter 8 verse 11. He said to this individual, this woman, um, where she was brought in the area of, of, of caught in the act of adultery. And, she, and Jesus says, where are the ones that uh, are, you know, brought the charges against you? And she said unto him, uh, Verse 11, he says, uh, no man there in John chapter 8, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. You get the concept? We're right here. We look back and we see the mistakes that we possibly have made or the omissions of things that we should have done in this past year and we can't do anything about it. But what we can do is we can begin from this day forward, going forward in the newness of the life that God has given to us and don't repeat the same mistakes. When God gives you an opportunity to serve Him, serve Him. Don't delay don't put it off. 
Jump out there in that process and you will begin to see uh, the power of God. So we began to see that. So those are the first two aspects of what we see, how to view your past. And then we go on to number three. Uh, what I want you to do is begin to see that we need to move a little bit forward. And that is the process of number three is improve on your God quota. What in the world do I mean by that? Improve upon your God time, your time with God. I venture to say there is no one among us, around us, who spends too much time with God. You know how I know that? Because back in Genesis, there was one individual that spent so much time with God. God says, hey, you don't worry about going to your home. You come to my home. Got it? So, you know, uh, spend, you improve your God quota time. If you're now spending two minutes or one minute or 15 seconds in your devotion time with God, increase it. Begin to find ways how you increase the God quota of your life. You will not get to the point to where you have too much of God. You will always have too much of the world if you don't have enough of God. So improve your God quota. Number four, things that I want to encourage is we have lived in the past and we have, have come through the COVID issue is that we need to change our negativity. In, 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 anybody in here negative? You, what's the matter? You won't admit it? Yeah. We're neg we look at things negatively. And we begin to say, well, you know, that's not going to work. That person's not going to amount to nothing. And that, that. We're very negative. I don't know if I can do it negative. Okay? I don't know if I like that negative. And you begin to see how things are. But let's change our negativity. Let's begin to look and to refocus this concept of all the things I was negative about and said that, well, I, I, I just can't uh, talk in front of somebody. I can't pray in front of somebody. I can't uh, lead a class. I can't lead somebody to Jesus Christ. That's all negativity. The Bible says I can do all things. Amen. So when you get into that concept, we need to change your negativity. You need to begin to reverse it to where you become an individual who says, with God's help, I will move forward. Number five in the area of how to view your past. Be willing, and I begin it this way, be willing to forgive yourself and others. Did you know uh, one of the reasons that people don't forgive other people? Because they've never forgiven themselves. Because if you're not willing to forgive yourselves, you'll never receive the love of Jesus Christ. It begins in the process of you saying, Lord, I, 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 you know, I can't do anything about my sinfulness, but I trust what the Word of God says, and I trust you as my Lord and Savior. You see, that's what it is. You've got to be willing to forgive yourself. If you're not willing to forgive yourself, you're more than likely not going to forgive other people. That's just the human nature. God has forgiven us. We all need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. And God offers, offers us forgiveness. And God wants us to forgive others. Most people want the forgiveness of God, but most people don't want to forgive others. That's a contradiction to the word of God. You can't, you can't in that process not forgive somebody if you want God to forgive you. So what is the process? What is it that we are to do today? Let me give you a couple things that we are to do today. Beginning right now today in this process of being here in the house of the Lord. One of the things I want to say is first thing is you need to be thankful. You're still alive. You have time. You look back and you say, well, I didn't do that. No, I should have drawn closer to. You have time to make change. 
And so you begin to this, uh, this process of saying, Lord, thank you that you are being patient with me. God, you are more patient with me than I deserve. Secondly, you begin to come to the process of evaluating your condition. Evaluate your condition. Where are you right now? Am I where I should be in relationship to where God wants me to be? Evaluate your condition. Quit evaluating everybody else and start evaluating you and finding out if you're where you ought to be, where God wants you to be. Evaluate your condition. That is, are you sure of your salvation? If you're uncertain of your salvation, today is the day that you need to get it right. It is the process of what we begin to realize. If I evaluate that I am hungry today and I eat today, then we begin to understand. If you evaluate and realize that you're lost and you begin to see that I need a Savior and Jesus is the Savior that was announced to the shepherds there in the field. Evaluate your condition. Now, many individuals evaluate their condition. They begin to say, well, you know, I'm not as good as I should be. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to do a little bit better. And they try on their own, own power to do it. That's where the New Year's resolutions come in and people will make them. And I'm not saying don't make them. I make them. I may not accomplish them. Each year I set out to read the Bible through in its entirety. I make that commitment. And there's, listen, I want you to know, there's some times that I may forget to read my Bible. Ooh, wow. Did I admit that? But I evaluate. And if it's a time that I have forgotten to read my Bible one day because of circumstances out of my control, which I know I should be able to read my Bible, but I'm talking about the three or four chapters. You know what I'm talking about. I may start out reading and then something comes up and I get you know, sidetracked. But there have been times that I have had to catch up. And that's why I typically always stay several days ahead. And I challenge you to, you know, don't just read a couple chapters ahead and you begin to get the picture of what I'm saying. So evaluate your condition. And when you evaluate your condition, as I said, many people do that. But the problem is many people are unwilling to make changes. So make the changes that need to be made. That's number three. Make changes that need to be made in you. What is the change that needs to happen in you? Not the church. Because the church... Listen, God's church is just what God wants it to be. But a lot of times, the individuals in the church are not what God wants them to be. Make changes that need to be made. Come into that process and make those changes. And I, be, I, I wind this all up by saying this. Stop living in the past and robbing yourself from the things that God wants to do in your life. What if today was the last day of you? The last day. You get to that final page, and it says, the end. The end. And you find out that you have let your past rob you of where God wants to bring you. And I want to say this with God, each day gets better and it never stops. Do you know what I'm saying? Is there is no end in sight for a person who puts their trust and faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, we somehow don't always do what we ought to do, but you can come to Jesus Christ and say, Father, forgive me. And he open arms says, I forgave you on the cross of Calvary. And he gives us the peace that'll change our lives forever.
Do you have that peace? Do you have that relationship? Each day gets better if God is in your life. Is God in your life? Let's pray.